Hello, and welcome back to Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. This will be the tutorial that I promised you from the first tutorial that was titled Wedding Magazine Styled Wedding Program. On that one, we made the cover page and the back, and now we're going to be making the bridal party page. And you probably recognize this picture because I brought it up briefly in the first tutorial. But what we're going to do is we're going to first start by going to cut out a picture, add a colored shape. I'm going to change the shape to white and I'm going to shrink it down. And what I'm going to do is make one master, which is I want to make this look like a Polaroid. So I'll make one master, put my text on there and my two of my text boxes and also I'm going to add another cut out and picture add a colored shape and I'm going to leave this one blue and I'm going to put this in the middle of the white rectangle so that it has the appearance of a Polaroid because this way you put the picture here and then you have the space at the bottom to add the wedding the name of the person in the wedding party and also the role they will play in the wedding. So I'm going to make one master picture and then I'm going to duplicate this for each person that's going to be in the wedding. First I want to get this pretty much centered in the middle of my bigger rectangle. And that looks pretty good. So now I want to add my text. So I'm going to go to text, add text, and I'm going to change this to black. I'm going to change the font. I In the last video, I said I was using ele the font Elegance, but actually I ended up clicking on um, another one that I like, which is Edwardian. So we'll continue using the Edwardian text for the title of the person that's going to be in the wedding party. And then I'm going to just use add a, a second text box, and this is going to be Arial black, which is a very thick font for the name of the person that's going to be in the wedding party. Let's find that very quickly. There it is. And because I want it to look complementary to the fancy text, I'm going to italicize it so that it will blend in better with the title, which will be the title of the person that's in the wedding. So now I'm going to take this blue because I want to set this whole thing up one time and then all I have to do is plug all the pictures in after that. I'm going to click on the blue square and I'm going to add, go to special effects, I'm going to add a shadow to it because some of the backgrounds have are white and if I put them up into my little Polaroid mock-up here, it will just look like a, a big white rectangle, but I want it to look like an actual Polaroid. So by putting a shadow, which you probably can't see now, but you will once I start filling in the pictures, put a shadow around the blue square. And now I'm going to, oh, actually I can just leave this as text here. And I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit so that the, so that the title of the person that's in the wedding can be bigger. Move this over so that it's sort of in the middle. And then I'm just going to elongate this a little bit. That's a good way to make your text look bigger um, without actually changing it too much. Uh, sometimes when you don't have a lot of space, if you're making a flyer or anything that you're using text for, um, you can just stretch it, elongate it a little bit, and it'll give it, uh, it'll show up better and, and appear to be a bit larger and more readable. Okay, so I'm just going to center this because I don't want to have to do anything else to this once I start adding my pictures. So I'm also going to add a shadow to the white portion. So I'm going to click on the white portion of the picture. I'm going to add another shadow and this time I'm going to pull it out a little bit and I'm going to soften it by going to customize this shadow and 
clicking a few times on edge softness because I want to give it the appearance, the more uh, it appears to be a softer shadow, the more it looks as if it's hovering above the page. And that's the effect that I want this to have. So now that I have everything I need for uh, adding the for the um, Polaroid effect, and, and now all I have to do is add my pictures, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to choose all of those functions all of those uh, elements that I just put on, the, both the text boxes, the blue square and the white square. And if you look here on the right hand side in the layers, you'll see that there's a blue square around all of them, which means that I have them all collected. And now I'm going to click the little puzzle button here so that I can make it into one picture. Now, before I get started duplicating this for each person, I'm going to put in my positional lines, my guidelines. Let me zoom out a bit. I'm going to try to center this back. I should have done that first, but I'm going to try to center it so that my guideline will be right in the middle. Go to size and position, alignment guides. I'm going to put a vertical one and I can see right there that it's off a little, but I'm going to move it over. I'm pretty good at eyeballing things. But it's, what we're doing is just trying to make sure that it's five and a half inches on this side, five and a half inches on that side. And I'm also going to put in three horizontal guides so that I can line up one, two, three. Each time you click this, it puts another guideline on and you just see the one. But then when I pull them apart, you'll see that there are actually three guidelines there. So that one's going to be for the bottom row of people. This is going to be for the for the mid row of people. And then this one will be for the bride and the groom. And I haven't quite decided how big I'm going to make each of them. Um, let's see. I'm going to pull this down so that I can see how big I want it down here on the bottom of the page. And as you can see, anytime you move one of the elements on the page, Toward a guideline, it will snap to that line if you move toward it slowly, and so you'll know you're you've uh, attached to that guideline. So I guess I will make these. I'm not going with any special size. I'm just using the guidelines. So for this one, I'm going to make the, the guidelines. I'm going to make the size. It maybe it's a quarter inch from the the other guideline, according to. Um, this zoomed in view and I'm just going to hit the copy button up here and paste. And I know I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're doing a nice size wedding, 10. So I need 10 of these boxes. So that's right now I have two. So I'm going to do three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you probably saw as I clicked the cop the paste button, I copied one, I copied this one, and then I just clicked the paste button nine times to get my ten uh, Polaroids or, or pull the little boxes that I'm going to or the frames that I'm going to add the photos into. So now I'm going to group these together because I want them to all be the same size as this one for now. And I'm going to pull it down to this line. And I'm just going to resize them all at the same time. That looks about right. So now I'm going to ungroup them and start spreading them out to make sure I have them the right size. If not, I can easily resize them again. So you click anywhere on the page because they were all still chosen. So you click anywhere on the page so that it releases them all. And now I'm just going to start moving them around on the screen. And I can see they're a little too big still. So while I have this one here, I'm I'm still going to group all of those that I, all the copies 
because while I resize this one, all of these will resize as well. So I'm going to click here so that I'm going to be changing the size of all of the these other Polaroids. And you see as I'm as I'm resizing this one, these will all be the same size as well. So that looks close in size. I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to just zoom over a little, click anywhere. And I'm going to put some of these on this row as well. Because we're going to have three rows of pictures with the bride and the groom at the very top. And I'll straighten them out and, and get them um, in the right position once I have them placed in the general area that I'm going to want them. I'll go ahead and put the bride and groom up here. I just have to make sure at the top I leave some room so that I can put the bridal party heading on this. And I'm seeing that I kind of like these two this size because that will be pretty big so I'm going to go in and I'm going to shrink these all a little bit more so I'm just going to choose all eight of those and I'm going to go to one corner and just shrink them down so that they're smaller than the bride and groom now that I have them to the size that I want I can actually make my bride and groom a little bigger so I'm moving down this guideline so that I can just about have them, I'll zoom in a little bit, so I can just about have these at the same uh, distance. I'll have the bride and groom just about at the same distance as the rest of the wedding party. I'll move this up a little bit so that I can, yeah, that looks about right. So now I'm gonna zoom out again. And once you get the positioning all set up, the rest is very easy. I'm gonna, Anytime I'm resizing them, I'm going to group the ones together that I want the same size and then resize them because I can make my bride and groom a little bigger now, which will make them look even better. Okay, so I have my bride and groom the size I want them. I'm going to ungroup the two of them so that I can position. And once again, I'm eyeballing this and it usually still comes out just fine. A lot of people ask for measurements and I'm going to try to do better with that, but I'm so used to doing it this way where I'm just relying on looking at it and repositioning. So I will have to do better in the future, but this one really doesn't require that you do any measuring because you can pretty much see if something is, is lined or aligned correctly. So I'm going to try to put the same amount of space between and on each side of these. And if I wanted to, I could bring this line over to make sure these were aligned, but just for um, trying to keep this video as short as possible, I'm just, I'm just going to do it by taking a look at it and trying to line it up by um, just vision. And it looks like I did pretty good this over a little bit yeah actually I did pretty good and I'm going to now do the same thing with these two at the bottom and then once I have all these aligned like I want I'm going to go back through and I'm going to click on the little puzzle piece for every one of them so that I can detach them where I can change the text so I'm going to click here and I'm going to just open up all of these because now we're going to start adding in the photos and their titles and some fictitious names. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these out as quickly as possible so we can move to the next step. The last four will be ungrouped. And at this point, I'm going to save this. And for those of you who are following along that what, that were able to get the uh, picture software so far, um, 
this would be a good point to save it so that if the software happens to suddenly close, you would not lose all of your work. So I'm going to choose Save As, and I'm just going to say Wedding for now. And that's going to be, make sure you're saving it in Picture It format. And it, as long as it's in Picture It format, you can go back in and make all the changes you might need. So now I'm going to save this, and we're ready to start putting in the pictures. So I'm going to start with the bride, with the groom. Uh, wait, bride goes first. We'll start with the groom, just, just because of, I, I think it'll look nice. So I'm going to click on this box right here, the blue box. I'm going to go to Cutout and Picture, Fill Cutout or Picture, and the picture of the apple. And then I'm going to go down here to my tray or my film strip, and I'm going to pull up the guy that I'm going to use for a groom. And this is the guy I'm planning to use for the groom. And you see that pop right in. It was already formatted correctly because all you're doing is you're swapping out this square with the picture, but it'll keep the same format. And if if um, you need to reposition this around, I have my my. I'm going to redo that because I have that that uh, it's snapping to one of the one of the other lines. Ah, so I'm going to slowly bring it back down because it, it's. Let me cancel this. Let's try that again. I'm going to get. The reason why it, it did that is because my guidelines are here and it was snapping to the guideline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move those guidelines so that I won't have that problem again, but I will leave the one in the middle so that I can see my center point for when I add my title of bridal party. And these guidelines will still be there if you need them again, if you accidentally move a picture out of place. Just pull the guideline back up, line it up with the one that is in the correct space, and then you can reposition the picture that you accidentally, accidentally moved. So now I'm going to zoom back in, and we're going to try that again. And I, I say in many of my videos, if I make a mistake, I don't cut all the mistakes out because I want you to see how easy it is to fix that mistake. So now I'm going to click on this blue square again. I'm going to go to Cutout and Picture. I'm going to go back down here to Fill Cutout or Picture. Click on the apple, which says picture, and I'm going to pull my groom up into the box again. Now I can move him all around, and as you can see, it's not getting stuck. So I'm going to move him back to the middle, and I'm going to resize him a little because his picture is a little small for the box. But the good thing about this is you can move the picture until you get it to the exact area that you want in the picture and it will keep this crop. It will keep the square crop so you don't have to go in and crop out all these pictures before you start using them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit done. I'm going to go to the bride, do the same thing. Click on the blue, go to cut out and picture, fill cut out or picture, click on the red apple which says picture. Then I'm going to bring my bride up, and I want her head to be about as big as his. So, and as you can see, when I drag this out, the picture is not going to go outside of that square. It will stay in the square. I guess I should have picked someone. Her neck is a bit long in this picture, but I want their faces to be just about the same size. So now she's looking like she's not wearing clothes, but... Um, you will want to take all that into consideration as to where you crop. So if the picture, if this was really what the bride gave me to work with, I would just have to simply shrink down her head and his head so it would look like she had on clothes. But for now, I just want to show you how we do to get the faces. You want to get the faces to about the equal size to one another. It keeps it from looking awkward. Okay, so now we're just going to keep plugging in people. We're going to put the the next row is going to be the maid of honor and one bridesmaid. So I'm going to, once again, same thing. You'll get so used to using these features once you get the software. And I'm still working on that. I'm trying to process of, of um, 
making the disk. I tried it using just the flash drive, and the first flash drive worked per perfectly for installing the first part of the software, but then it was still calling for the CD for the second part. So now I'm going to try it today, and I, I will give an update after that um, to let you know if the picture itself will be available to you. Um, I'm trying it today where I'm keeping the second half, the second CD on a CD and just putting the first CD on a flash drive and seeing if it will um, work with that way, work better that way so that I can make copies for anybody who's interested. I also bought a, a separate CD writer that's a, a separate per peripheral um, external so that I can try that process because it might just be a problem with the one on my computer. So having said that, we're going to continue with this project, but I'll let you know when and when the um, picture at software is available for anybody who wants a copy of it. All right, so I'm just going to click on this picture again. I've already opened up um, fill with the picture and clicked on the apple, and now I'm going to draw my first bridesmaid up and she fit perfectly so I'm going to leave her just like that I'm going to click done I'm going to click the second one cut out a picture fill with a picture click on the apple bring up my next bridesmaid and she I will need to resize her because she's has a small head and I want her to be have a head as, or a face the same size, general size, as the first um, bridesmaid or maid of honor. Make it a little bigger and center her a little bit. But as you can see, it's easy to do it this way because you don't have to crop each picture. All right, now um, I'm going to put the flower girls here. We'll put all the ladies on one row and all the guys on the second row. So I'm going to go to cut out and picture. Feel cut out with the picture. Click the apple. And I'm going to pull up my flower girl. I'm going to resize her a bit. Kids have smaller heads than adults, so this one doesn't have to be as big as theirs, but try to put it in like a, try to make it proportional to what a child's face would look like next to an older adult. And now I'm going to click on my last blue column my last blue square in this column go to those same functions pull in my other flower girl let me scroll over a little bit so that i can reposition her and make her fit her face about the size of the other little girl all right and now we're going to start on the groomsmen and the male bridal party uh, attendance. So we're going to click here, do that same process, and as you use the software more, you'll find that you will be using a lot of the same functions, so it'll become second nature to you. We're going to put in our first groomsman, best man, And we're going to position him right here. Try to make his face proportionate with the ladies. And we're going to do the same thing here. Bring up our second groomsman. And I have to zoom him out and get his head to the right size. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that's about even. snap into the midline so all I'm going to do is shrink that side down some and then pull on this side to get him in the middle of the box. Next I'm going to hit done because I don't want to move my middle guide because I still have to put my bridal party heading at the top. So now I'm going to add my Bible bearer and my ring bearer. Where's my little boys? There they are. This is one of those um, pictures. His head is kind of big in the shot, but I think it'll work. 
And I'm going to do the last one. Cut on the picture. And I'm going to bring up my last flower, um, last young man in the wedding. And he will be my Bible bearer. So I'm going to shoot. Well, his head pretty big like the other kids. Not a big head, but a, a, the picture, the close-up on his face. So I'm going to just make the two boys' faces about the same size. All right. So I'm going to click Done. And as you can see, on the white background, you can see that little shadowed edge that I put on each one when I was getting started so that it doesn't just look like a complete square. It, it still gives it that little um, appearance as if it has a, a Polaroid shot. So now all we have left to do for this page is to change the names and to change the titles here. So I'll just do the bride and groom just to show you, but it's, it, but you'll do the same feature or the same functions for all of these. I'm going to, I'll zoom in a little. All you're going to do in Picture It is right click the text, hit edit. I'll make this my nephew's name, Terrence Nelson, since this is why I'm making it. And then I'm going to change, click out of that, hit done. I'm going to right click on the Edwardian script and I'm going to type in the groom and hit done. Then I'm going to zoom over or slide over to the bride. And I'm not going to use this bride's name because I don't have her permission yet. So I will put, let's see. I'll just give it a name, Nicole. Oh, I won't go with that name, Nicole Edwards. Let's go with that. All right. So now I'm going to change this to the bride, the Edwardian script to the bride, and hit done. Zoom over a little bit. I'm going to zoom in a bit more and I'm going to make both their titles bigger and I want to make them the same size so I'm going to click on his uh, title as a groom first hold down the control key on your keyboard and click hers and this way I will be resizing them at the same time and then I'm just going to click in any corner and make that title bigger now I can zoom in and reposition Click anywhere so that you are not going to be moving both the names at the same time. It releases the join feature and then you can move them individually. But I've resized them and I can do that with the titles for all of the wedding party participants. But I'm not going to, but you, you see how it could be done very easily. All you would do is click on the first one, right click on the first one, first uh, title, hold control, and then click each one of these and change them all at the same time. So now we're going to pretend that I've put names for all these folks, and I'm going to zoom out, and you see you see how, how it looks. Now, this is just a simple format to use, but you can get as elaborate if, as you'd like, and at another time, if some of you are interested, I can do some of my um, designs that are more elaborate, but this is a basic one that anybody can do this could even be done as far as the pictures if you did it in um, publisher or in microsoft word you would um, most likely have to crop the pictures as a square first this uh, software just saves you that step but you could do the same thing in um, word or publisher you just have to crop the pictures into squares before you before you uh, set it up so now I'm going to put the title here across the top and I'm going to put that title in also in the fancy format of Edwardian script. I'm going to type the bridal party. And I'm going to make this larger so it can be easily seen. I'm going to zoom in 
and I want it to stand out more, so I'm going to check, let me try an effect, maybe doing like I did, putting the white outline around it, highlighting the edge, it's called. I'll click on this one with the thick border. It's going to turn it red. I'm going to change it to white. And I'm probably going to take it down a little bit so that the white won't be so thick. Or it didn't look too bad thicker. Okay, I'll leave it thicker. And then I'm going to do the same thing as far as putting a shadow on this page. I'm going to, on the under the bridal party, just to make it stand out a little bit more and look as if it's floating on the page. So I'm going to go click on it. I'm going to go to Special Effects Shadow. And this time I'm just going to choose a drop-down shadow instead of the soft one. And if I want to soften it, I can after the fact. But I think that looks fine because it makes it stand out enough so I don't have to... Um, I don't have to make it look soft so because it looks like it's floating already. So now I'm just going to scroll out so you can see the finished bridal page. Now in the example I had quite a few other people. I based it on a larger wedding but all you have to do if you want to add in extra people you would just group all of these folks lock it up because if you don't lock it up and you move with the guidelines, all the things will move wherever they want to move and you will have to realign everything. So lock it up and then just shrink them down smaller and then you have space to add extra people if you want. But I'm going to leave this one with this sized bridal party. I'm going to just hit the back arrow and then I'm going to save this. And now we have the bridal party page completed. Very simple. In the next tutorial, I'll be working on some of the side stories like the engagement, how they met. Um, you can include any page of it that you might want. I might, uh, since you already know how to design it now, you can use these techniques to make up anything you want for any of the other pages. And I'm going to do, uh, I'll, if you want to see that done, um, let me know in the comments and I'll, I will do that, but I'm, I'm going to make one on the engagement and something else, uh, anything else that I might want to add. Oh, the program, the wedding program. So yeah, I guess I guess I would make, <laughs> I'll do one more video of showing you uh, how to do the, set up the wedding program because this the, is the whole point that this is supposed to be the wedding program. Um, ma uh, magazine style but the program for the wedding so in the next uh, tutorial because I don't want to go any longer on this one I'll show you how to set up the program for my, mine and some of the other people's that I've done the programs for I put the, the setup for the wedding and also the setup for the reception so I'll do that in the next video so stay tuned and I will see you next time if you like this video, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe, share it with anyone you'd like. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, thank you once again. Here are some samples of some finished bridal party pages. The first one was with different pictures. This one is with the date only. This one you can add an extra element using the white background that's transparent and adding i added the rings and on this last one i added two hearts